The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and the peace to God's people on earth. O oh God, on this day you revealed your Son to the nations by the leading of a star. Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I think Emily has a message. Our first lesson this morning is from Isaiah chapter 60, beginning with verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise, arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. 
When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it had been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For you, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God and our Savior Jesus. Amen. Happy Epiphany. You don't hear that very often, do you? The proper greeting is, I wish you and your family a happy Epiphany. Or, more formal, may the glory of the Lord Christ fill your home with happiness and loads of love on Epiphany and always, every day. It might be fun to offer such a greeting today to see how a person responds. Might create a good conversation, but most likely a curious look. Feel free to simply offer blessings to you and yours in the new year. Epiphany, also called the the Theophany, a celebration of God manifested as the baby Jesus to be revealed to the world. The holiday is marked by the day the Magi, or the wise men, or the kings, visited the baby Jesus in Bethlehem. Jesus' baptism is also celebrated during Epiphany, which we will do next week. The following is the introduction of one of my favorite books that I refer to often, Don't Know Much About the Bible, by Kenneth C. Davis. In his introduction, he writes, I was raised in a traditional Protestant church with a full menu of Christmas pageants and confirmation classes. I thought I possessed a fairly solid biblical education. In the annual Christmas pageant, I rose from angel to shepherd to Joseph, a non-speaking role. Jesus' earthly father stood there mute behind Mary, saying nothing. I never made it to the plum roll, one of the three kings who visited the infant Jesus. They had the coolest costumes. Three very tall brothers in my church always got those parts. I didn't know until much later that they weren't kings at all, but magicians from Iran. To throw in more controversy, today is New Year's Eve, and we welcome in 2024 AD, Anno Domini, Year of Our Lord, However, comparing Matthew's dates, the birth of Jesus to the days of King Herod, who died in 4 B.C., before Christ's birth, year one could not have been year one. Further, the story that follows our reading, the slaughter of the innocents, because Joseph had taken Jesus away, the wise men did not go back to the king, and so he took it upon himself to kill all the children under two. In the region. This was to ensure that the king, this new king, 
could never come to power threatening Herod. It is meant as a story to remind the Jews of the Pharaoh who had ordered Jewish babies killed in the time of Moses. More controversy, Herod did many ruthless things, including eliminating opponents, almost on par with that of King David, the one so revered that Jesus is named his descendant. To set us at ease, Herod's actions of the slaughter of the innocents could not be found in any historical record. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence, but there is no way to confirm Matthew's story of the massacre, nor the true date we are living in. Davis continues asking the question, were there really three kings, and where did they come from? These wise men only appear in the Gospel of Matthew, only for this one time, and are never heard from again. The original Greek calls them magi, the source of the word is magician, and the Magi were originally a clan of the Medes, as you heard in our first reading, who formed the priestly class in Persia, the modern-day Iran. By the time of Jesus, the word Magi had come to refer to professional practitioners of magic and astrology. The mention of the star guiding them points to them having been astrologers. There is no hint of them being royalty, other than the fact that they received an audience with King Herod and brought, as Emily said, very costly gifts. And how many were there? Nowhere in the story does it say that there were three of them. It only is a reference based on the presentation of the three gifts. Also, the fact that King Herod orders the death of children under the age of two suggests that the wise men may have arrived in Jerusalem well after Jesus' birth. Verse 10 and 11 has two points. Verse 11 reads, On entering the house, not a stable, no manger is mentioned. Further evidence that they were not present at the nativity. And regardless, how they responded is the same as the shepherds. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. That was our first candle of Advent. If the Christmas story does not fill you with joy, bah humbug. That is the whole point of the birth of Jesus. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive its king. Back to the Magi. Despite the later folk tales spun around them and the popularity of the song We Three Kings, the Magi are anonymous. Their legendary names of Belthazar, Mel Melchior, I could say this yesterday, Melchior and Caspar in Western traditions. These emerged much later. Also, the belief is that they came from the three main continents, Europe, Asia, and Africa. Yes, joy to the known world at that time. The Bible does record their three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The latter two are aromatic herbs. Frankincense was used for worship in the temple. It is symbolic of Christ, the high priest. Gold is symbolic of Christ the king. And myrrh, a perfume, was used to anoint dead bodies. It is symbolic of his death for the sake of truth, and therefore, of, speaking of Christ as prophet. And the star, pouring over all the astronomical records, the unusual star that moved through the sky until reaching Bethlehem, where it then stood still, some associate Halley's Comet with it. But the closest appearance would have been 12 B.C., too early for Jesus' birth. In 3 BC, the planet Jupiter rose in conjunction with Venus, which might have caused this celestial event. Chinese astronomical records indicate a supernova in 5 BC, which is a possibility since Jesus was born before Herod's death in 4 BC. The wise men's star remains another awkward, misfitting piece of the nativity puzzle. What the nativity does speak to is that the announcement to shepherds and wise men makes the story speak to all people. Shepherds ranked fairly low on the social register. 
While the Magi are portrayed as wise men and even kings, God came for all, the lowly and the royals, the locals and those from far away on the other side of the known world. The only connection is found, the other connection, excuse me, is found in our Old Testament reading from Isaiah. In speaking to the time, Jerusalem is found in good fortune, replacing the darkness it had been in for so many centuries. Its poverty is replaced with riches. It is foreigners who contribute to and assist in the building of the temple. The prophet Ezra's expedition to Jerusalem had those who traveled with him carrying silver and gold and frankincense, as we read, from the Persian king's treasury. Also, the Babylonian Jews, upon returning from exile, also contributed. So the wise men visiting Jesus speak to the gift part of the prophecy of the newborn king. And this is where we go back to the pageant. Shepherds, wise men, the innkeeper. I mentioned Martin Luther's 1543 Christmas sermon on Christmas Eve. Let me share it again. The inn was full, Luther states. There are many of you who think to yourselves, if only I'd been there, how quick I would have been able to help the baby. Luther writes, well, why not do it now? You have Christ in your neighbor. You ought to serve your neighbor for what you do to your neighbor in need, you do to the Lord himself. And of all the characters, there's one that's always left out, as we add it in this story. King Herod. He is the antithesis of joy, full of cruelty and vindictiveness, hatred and violence. His solution is killing and war. Thankfully, Joseph experienced a dream to escape Herod's wrath. Those were biblical accounts. But such atrocities have continued throughout history. Davis' intro also shares these facts about those in power choosing to do ruthless things to remain there. And it's not the enemy. It is like those sitting among us. It happened in 1384. In an attempt to make the Bible accessible to common folk who didn't understand the earthly writings in Hebrew, Latin, or Aramaic Greek, John Wycliffe, a renegade English priest, produced one of the first English Bible translations before his death in 1384. The authorities were not amused. They denounced him as a heretic. After his death, Wycliffe couldn't be executed. So the church officials did the next best best thing. They exhumed his corpse and burned it. William Tyndale also translated the Bible to English. He was accused of perverting the scriptures, was arrested and imprisoned as a heretic, and finally executed in in Antwerp by strangulation. That not being enough, His body was burned at the stake in October 1536, just for good measure. Tyndale is now honored as the father of the English Bible. Small compensation for having one's neck wrung and then barbecued. Humankind has a long way to truly earn the title humankind. Elizabeth Webb, in her commentary on Luke, writes, The message of God's peace comes to a world more practiced at the art of warfare than it is at the craft of reconciliation. God's peace stands in striking contrast to the peace of Herod, the Roman Caesars, during whose reign both John the Baptist and Jesus are both born, imprisoned, and executed. Many in our world are living in such a nightmare not only overseas, but in our own nation, on our metro streets, in homes, in our neighborhood, where hatred rules over love. On this New Year's Eve, let me close with a few inspiring quotes that could be perfect new life resolutions. 
from Martin Luther King Jr. I refuse to accept the view that mankind is so tragically bound to the starless midnight of racism and war that the bright daybreak of peace and brotherhood can never become a reality. I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word. And of all people, Charlie Chaplin, who rarely spoke while acting. But in real life, this quote speaks volumes. You need power only when you want to do something harmful. Otherwise, love is enough to get everything done. We have a God, as 1 John 4, 8 speaks, who is love. And this is why we worship. To be reminded regularly of these truths. God is love. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And through the Holy Spirit working in us, that we will be reminded of next week with the baptism of our Lord, these truths can be incarnate through our words and deeds as we cast ourselves in the greatest role of the pageant, child of God. Living in this manner, we are called to greet others with blessings to you and yours now and for always in Jesus' name. Happy New Year. Amen. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He's 
Jesus, right hand of the Father, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In joy and wonder, we pray for the church, <clears throat> those in need, and all of God's creation. <clears throat> Shine your favor on your people and uphold us with the abundance of your steadfast love. Send us out from our assembly, trusting in your presence to announce your gracious deeds, Christ our light. God, our shepherd, we pray for the earth, for rain in areas affected by drought, for sun-flooded lands, and for peace in places suffering from natural disasters. Christ our Lord. Make your ways known to all the nations. Join all people together, young and old, rich and poor, in order to work your righteous acts upon them. Christ our light. Ease the suffering of all who live with chronic illness, addiction, or distress. Surround them with family and friends who bring assurance of your compassion and care. Christ, our light. Draw near to all children, the sisters and brothers of Jesus. Free the young and vulnerable ones who are in the chains of abuse, poverty, or neglect. Give them abundant life. Christ, our light. Remembering your covenant that draws the saints into one community, join our voices with theirs in praise of all the good things you do for your people. Christ, our light. Almighty God, we entrust you, we entrust to you all for whom we pray, confident that you fulfill your promises through Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us share our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debtors, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. For all who are gathered, let us take a moment to welcome those around us with a greeting. And for those of you online, please share a word of peace in the comment or chat. Most all, as we go out into the world, may we greet others as people of peace. You may be seated. In this time of reflection and response, you're invited to fill out your welcome card. Share any reflections, questions, or prayers on the back. Also, take this time to prepare your offering. For those gathered, the collection plates are in the front and in the back, and there is a QR code in the bulletin to give you to give electronically. For those online, go to our website, stlukesbloomington.org. There is a link to give at the bottom of every page. Enjoy this time.
May the eternal light of God guide you in the way of peace. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let your light shine before heaven. Glory be to God. 